When I look out on this field, I, I see the future. Three years ago, this was nothing but fields, empty. And now you have an area that's powering an entire town and will 30, 40 years into the future. And it's completely clean. Woo! Good morning, good morning. All right, is this thing on? Can everybody hear me all right? All right. Our history here begins in 1914, when a man named Edward Babcock first arrived here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And very rapidly, Mr. Babcock amassed 156,000 acres for about 25 cents an acre. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, up until 1940, lumber was the primary export. How about some baby alligators to start our morning off? Beautiful great white egret joining us here this morning as well. When we see these baby gators out in the wild, we know that Mama is watching us right now. All right, moving ahead, right around 1940, when Edward's son, a man named Fred Babcock, actually moved here from Pittsburgh, built his home here on the ranch, calling it the Cypress Lodge, and introduced cattle ranching and produce farming. And here we are in the 21st century, those two occupations still the backbone of this entire operation. A little gator sitting over here to our left, right up at the mouth of this creek. See the gator out there in the uh, deadfall? about a seven-footer sitting out there. All right, moving ahead. 1997 was a sad milestone when Fred Babcock passed away. When Fred died, the rest of the Babcock family, they just wanted out. No real explanation was ever given. They tried to sell the remaining property back to the state of Florida. Unfortunately, Florida was in no financial shape to make that purchase. The Babcocks turned around and did the absolute unthinkable. They started speaking with developers. Well, they got together with a man named Sid Kitson from the Kitson Development Group. That group had a vision to build the very first solar-powered town in America. Well, that solar village is sitting on 22,000 acres, obtained through a very complex set of negotiations. The same negotiations that returned 74,000 acres, give or take, back to the state of Florida at a very deep discount. That discount coming with one caveat. Through legislative action, we renamed the area we're going to see together today as the Babcock Ranch Preserve. That word preserve does exactly what it says. It preserves our property from any commercial growth, the land itself retaining its current state forever and ever. All right, I promised you guys a baby gator. About eight months old, he is very new to the tour industry. He's only been with us for about a week yet. Uh, so he's a little chilly this morning. Uh, he's pretty docile. Show the typical coloration of a baby gator, black with yellow stripes. The yellow stripes, a very effective camouflage pattern out here in the wild. You would not believe how well these little guys blend in to the side of a waterway. The whole concept started in 2004. I would say I've been probably dreaming about it <laughs> for at least the last 20 years. Babcock Ranch has just taken off. We've sold over 600 homes. In just a couple of years, we've sold over 2,000 lots to builders. Probably have well over 700 plus homes under construction. By the end of this year, there'll be 2,000 people living here. We are approved for 19,500 homes and we're approved for 6 million square feet of commercial space. About 20 years, there'll be about 50,000 people living here and probably another 15 to 20,000 that are working here on a regular basis. It'll be a true hometown. And what was important for us was that it's truly powered by solar energy. I grew up in a very small town in New Jersey. I really was an outdoor enthusiast. Spent a lot of time camping up in the Adirondacks. A week over three weeks at a time. It really developed for me a, a love of, uh, of nature uh, and a respect uh, for the environment. I went to uh, Wake Forest. I went there on a football scholarship and I was very fortunate. Those experiences along the way uh, really had a big influence on, on me as, uh, as I then went into uh, the NFL. I had an opportunity to play for uh, five years. I was with the Green Bay Packers and uh, for a short time with the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Great experience. I played for two great men and Bart Starr in Green Bay and Tom Landry in Dallas. Learned a lot from them. You also learned a lot about yourself. Learned a lot about hard work and what it takes to, to, to be the best at your profession. And uh, so all those experiences, it seemed like that all was setting me up for for uh, the world of real estate. I've always been fascinated with renewable energy. If you want to be truly sustainable, you have to think about the environment. And clearly, one of the biggest issues you have is the production of energy. It wasn't until uh, Babcock Ranch 
that we realized, wow, we've got a great opportunity to make a big difference and do something nobody's ever done before. It's 91,000 acres, by the way. It's 143 square miles. And most of these development companies wanted to come in and develop the entire parcel. This was back in 2004. We started talking to the family and our vision was, let's preserve as much of this land as possible. And at the same time, let's create the most environmentally responsible new town that's ever been developed. Right when we're about to sign the contract, every single person and my company said, you, you shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do it. I was the only person. And I'll tell you what motivated me. Uh, my, was my father and I were extremely close. And in January 2005, my father was dying of esophageal cancer. And so the last thing uh, that I talked to my dad about was Babcock Ranch. And I said, I explained it to him, and I, I went through the whole vision. And I said, but Dad, this is, this is really a huge undertaking. And he says to me, Sid, it just seems like you've been working your whole life for this. Why wouldn't you do it? And that's one of the last things he said to me. And so from that mo moment forward, I, I felt like through the whole year that he was with me. I really, I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I felt like... No matter what, there was a peace that I had because I felt like, like my dad was with me. So we ended up purchasing 91,000 acres. And then we sold 73,000 acres to the state of Florida in the largest land purchase in the history of the state. So after we closed this in, uh, on July 31st, 2006, so for, for the first six, seven, eight months, uh, it looked like we were tracking very, very well. And then this little thing happened in 2008. Not in generations has Wall Street absorbed the number of body blows it took today. Lehman, Merrill, AIG. Their problems, all stemming from the housing crisis, brought the Dow down 504 points, sixth biggest point drop in history. And it, it, was, it was brutal. When we're waiting for the market to turn around, we really focused on our initiatives. So I didn't know how to get in touch with the president of Florida Power and Light. So this is a true story. So I decided to, um, to stalk him. <laughs> so I found out where he was going to be. And at the time, he was uh, speaking to a subcommittee up in Tallahassee. So I jumped on a plane, I went up there, and after he finished his talk in front of the committee, he walked out and went to an elevator. I first met him just by chance in, a, in an elevator, and he gave me his elevator pitch, literally. The only problem was I only had two floors to do it in. And so he said, look, I want to try to power this from solar, and I want to have a solar city. And I'll tell you, to his credit, he first of all didn't look at me like I was crazy. And I said, well, that sounds great, Sid, but there's, you know, there's a lot of you know, interesting and challenging elements to that that we'd have to address. And he said, great, when do you have time? Sure enough, he contacted me the very next day. Now you gotta remember the time, there was no city there. It was nothing but raw land. It became pretty clear, just mathematically, it wasn't gonna really work from a standpoint of having affordable electricity. So I said, okay, what, what can we do? I think the only way we can move forward on this is you're gonna have to give me the land. I kind of figured that would be the end of the conversation. I said, okay, I'll give you the land. Most property developers won't give up a single acre of land, much less 600 acres. He looks at me, he goes, really? I said, yeah. Sid, to his word, he actually gave us the land. A couple years later, we were able to get the permits. And we announced that we were gonna be the first solar powered town in America. And we went out and built the first 75 megawatt solar facility. It was so successful, uh, we built a second project there. And this time he did not give us the land, but this time we didn't need it because solar panel pricing had come down. The first 330,000 panels led to another 330,000 panels being installed there. And then another project which we installed there, which was a 10 megawatt battery facility, which at the time was the largest in Florida. One of the largest in the country. I just didn't realize it was gonna be so difficult. And what I've learned in the process is innovation, period, is very, very difficult. Anybody in, throughout this country, throughout the world, who has a big idea 
an innovative idea. When they start to bring it forward, there are going to be a whole lot of people who step up and go, wait a minute, hold on, and all of a sudden the roadblocks start to rise. That's where, you know, the perseverance, not giving up, working hard to make sure everybody understands exactly what it is you're trying to do uh, becomes very, very important. It took us eight years from when we started to come to an agreement and to be able to get the legislature and everybody on board with a solar array at Babcock Ranch to make it the first solar-powered town in America. Eight years and a lot of work.